Friends, 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 we have to talk. We have to talk about the new release of the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 series. And I think with this release, Samsung really tries to screw you. And I want to explain it to you a little bit by comparing the uh, data that we have from the phone without having the phone in my hands, just seeing the reviews and seeing the data that I have on my hand already. I can tell you, this is a phone where Samsung really tries to screw you. They're bringing out worse hardware than they brought out at the beginning of the year with the Samsung Galaxy S20 series. And they want you to pay the same price that you paid for the S20 when it started, even slightly bit more, that you can get now for less, for way less. So just let, look, look at the just let's look at the Galaxy Note 20 and compare with the Galaxy S20. Just for a second. Of course, the S20 is a smaller device, 6.2 inch. The new one is 6.7 inch. Who wants a 6.7 inch? Okay, it's a Note device. Branded, good. Let's skip over it. Let's take a look at the cameras. Is there something new? Nope. 64 megapixel sensor, the same sensor. Is there something new in terms of memory? RAM, 8 gigabytes of memory, the same. Is it a new memory? No, it's the same. Let's take a look at battery. Yeah, battery is bigger. 4,300 milliamp hours versus 4,000 milliamp hours. But the screen is also 6.7 instead of 6.2 inch. So probably necessary to get the same amount of battery time, battery life, than on the S20. Let's take a closer look at the screen. Galaxy Note 7, 6.7 inch. Shouldn't this have a higher resolution than the S20 6.1 inch? 4,000 euros, roughly thousand dollars and 1,600 New Zealand dollars, 1,600 New Zealand dollars, no, even more, 1,800, 1,900 New Zealand dollars, yeah, roughly, I think is the price. Let's, let's, just, let's just check the New Zealand dollars for all my um, folks out here in New Zealand, Kiwis, Kiaora, uh, the Galaxy Note 20, yeah, I can pre-order it, but I don't see a price. Costs uh, in its 4G variant $1,699. In its 5G variant $1,899. Note 20. Note 20 Ultra is even more expensive, like $2,000 something. Dollars. New Zealand dollars. Uh, so, um, nope. It doesn't have the bigger resolution. It has a bigger display. But a lower resolution so we have 1080p full hd display stretch so 1080p uh, full hd display stretch means 1080 by 2400 pixels on the note 20 and on the smaller 6.2 inch uh, galaxy s20 we have 1440 by 3200 pixels same ratio 20 by 9 20 by 9 but we get more pixels, the sharper image on a phone that's less from Samsung. First big bummer for the Note 20. Second big bummer, what's wrong with the Gorilla Glass? So the protection for the screen itself. The back might be not as good protected as you can see here. It cracked on my LG G7. And, uh, but the front needs Gorilla Glass for protection. Or some something else, Dragon Trail Glass, I think is what Google uses for the use for the Pixel 3a. Uh, now the Pixel 4a is using also Gorilla Gorilla Glass. Um, so what's wrong? We have Gorilla Glass 5 on the Note 20. We have Gorilla Glass 6, so the better version, the higher version that is even more resistant to scratches and more resistant to faults and more resistant to cracking on the S20. You could say, well, does it really matter? Why? 
Of course it matters. The S20 is cheaper. You can get it cheaper for now. And why is Samsung creating a product at the end of the year that is worse than what they presented at the beginning of the year? Especially a note line where it should be better in some ways at least. And it is in none way better. It is in almost always worse. And I cannot understand it. I really cannot understand it. It's like 393 PPIs comparable to 563 PPIs on the S20. You'll notice the difference. You'll notice the difference. It's like more than 100 uh, PPI, almost more than 100 PPI more. You notice the difference. Granted, both HDR10 plus. What is the next cut? No, 120 Hertz refresh rate. So you get the 60 Hertz refresh rate. 4,000 euros, dollars, 1,699 New Zealand dollars, new Samsung phone. I can understand it if Samsung has it in their Galaxy A line, because the A line is more affordable. So even the higher class A line has a 60 Hz display, granted. But they don't even include some kind of motion blur reduction like Sony does it for its 1,299 or 1,199 euros, dollars, whatever bucks smartphone. I don't get it. 120 Hertz Full HD is possible on the S20. It is not, not possible on the Note 20. Why? I don't know. And don't let me start about the processor. This is a, it's, a, it's okay. It is normal usually when, for example, Huawei releases a new phone like the Mate 30 Pro. They put in the newest chipset ever. And then when the P40 Pro came out this year, or the P40 came out, it's using the same chipset. Granted, maybe Samsung has another release cycle where they present the new processors at the beginning of the year and the Note line is using the same processor. But for whatever reason, Samsung decided to keep, for most parts of the world, except the United States, the same processor, the same crappy processor that everyone criticized in the S20 line already for its low battery performance and its, in general, lower performance than the Qualcomm Snapdragon processor that they put in the US models. So what did they learn from it? Basically nothing. What they did is we put the same proce processor in there. We don't even reduce the price because we put the same processor in it. No, we keep the price or make it slightly higher even. Unbelievable. And it's not only this. <laughs> it's, they put the Snapdragon 865 plus processor in the US models. So everyone watching for the US, you can turn off now for this rant because it doesn't affect you. You get the best processors you get a very good phone and the Note 20, even though it has this downgrades in display and other things, has at least the better performance than the S20 in the US. Rest of the world, nope. You get it worse because the 990 uh, processor, the Exynos 990 processor, is inefficient when it comes to battery life, battery performance. So what you will get is with the bigger display, even though the battery is slightly a little bit bigger, you will get worse performance in terms of battery life. So the Note 20 will not last as long as the S20 when it comes to battery life. Unbelievable. I really... This is okay. Granted, maybe the S20 will not long as last, uh, long last as the Note 20 when you run it in 120 hertz. That's for sure. But you at least have the option to run it in 120 hertz if you want to. You can switch back to 60 hertz if you don't want to. And QHD, you have QHD, you have the sharper display. Still, so you still have the sharper display at 60 hertz, and you get longer battery life with the S20. Next thing they cut from the Note 20: micro SD card slot. Why do you need a micro SD card slot? We pack in 128 gigabytes of RAM. And if you pay more, we pack in even 256 gigabytes of RAM. Wait a second. 
there's a better variant with 256 gigabytes of uh, ROM. ROM, ROM, not RAM. 8 gigabytes RAM. Yeah. UFS is slightly faster, 3.1 against 3.0. Mm, who cares? Really, who cares? But you don't have SD card slot on S20. You could put an SD card in to just have a bit more memory for your internal data. So again, a step backwards with the Note 20. In terms of camera, it's the same. You have the same camera. It's a 12 megapixel f 1.8, 26 millimeters wide, uh, 1 over 1.76 1. inches um, sensor, uh, which is like uh, 1.8 micrometer, dual pixel PDA, PDF OIS. It's exactly the same sensor as on the S20. Even the 64 megapixel sensor f2 telephoto lens is the same. Um, sensor completely the same, nothing changed there. Three times uh, hybrid optical zoom, 12 megapixel ultra wide, also exactly the same, nothing changed there. LED flash also there, 8K video um, recording also there, gyro, EIS and OIS, 10 megapixel front facing camera exactly the same as on the S20, uh, stereo speakers exactly the same, no 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is exactly the same, Wi-Fi also exactly the same, nothing changed there, GLONASS support, USB type C 3.2, same fingerprint under the display, also the same, Samsung DeX support desktop experience is also the same, uh, Bixby is also the same, nothing changed there. Like I said, the only thing that changed really is the um, uh, battery, 4300 versus 4000 milliampere hours, but like I said, it's a smaller screen on this S20, so you get better battery life anyway. Um, 15 uh, watts uh, key wireless charging is both the same, so the rest is basically the same, but the price, the price difference. Let's 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 just. Let's, I'm just looking at the New Zealand prices here because I have the PB Tech open here right now, and uh, look at the Galaxy S20, which is like uh, one thousand two hundred ninety-eight dollars, one thousand three hundred dollars, and the new model, which has all these disadvantages, one thousand six hundred nine. Are you kidding me? This is screwing us over, and it's not all. It's not all, I forgot almost the most important thing, the build quality. You know, when Google Pixel 4a came out and we say, oh, we have a plastic build, 350 euros, 350 dollars, something like this. Okay, granted. Then OnePlus Nord, and OnePlus Nord came first out. Yeah? OnePlus Nord came first out, yeah, we have a plastic uh, edge, just like the Xperia 10 Mark II that I have here, plastic edge. Rest is glass of glass, but plastic edge. Samsung said, hold my beer, $400 only for the normal plastic edge. We have a $1,000 smartphone with complete plastic build. No, nah, not complete. Maybe they have, I think, uh, some kind of aluminium in the edges, <laughs> at least. But they did a plastic build. It's the so-called glastic, whatever this means. I mean, 1,000 euros, dollars, bucks, whatever, Linden dollars, and you get a plastic phone back. Even uh, you have to buy a cheap Xiaomi phone, Redmi Note 9 Pro or something like this. I, even I think this, like for 200 bucks or something like this, gets a glass back. This here has a glass back. Xperia 10 Mark II has a glass back. 359 euros. Uh, you can get it. It has IP rating. Okay, this is granted also has an IP rating. It has a plastic bag for 1000 euros. Get the S20 if you're a Samsung lover. If you want a Samsung, get an S20. Who wants the Note 20 for the pen? For the fucking pen you pay so much? No. No, 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 no. This is screwing us over. This is really screwing us over, I would say. And it's only the Galaxy S20 versus the Note 20. I'm not talking about the Note 20 Ultra. Let's, let's, do I have time? I don't, but it doesn't matter. Let's go, I'm now fully loaded. Let's go into this and, and, and compare it to the, to the S20 Ultra. 
to see if this is really screwing us over here. Uh, doesn't matter if 5G or not 5G. Uh, let's go to 5G. Let's compare the 5G variants with, with each other. They have 6.9 inch uh, display, same display, same size, same thing, uh, same resolution. No, 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 no. Even a lower resolution on the Note 20 Ultra. It has a lower resolution, 1440 by 3088. And the S20 Ultra has a resolution of 1440 by 3200. 108 megapixels, both same camera, 12 uh, gigabytes of RAM, or even 16 gigabytes of RAM as S20 Ultra. You don't get a 16 var um, uh, gigabytes variant. Then 4,500 4, milliampere hours battery on the Note 20 Ultra. Granted, it has a slightly lower resolution, but the same display basically. And a 5,000 milliampere hours on the S20 Ultra. So basically, everyone who's buying an Exynos variant of the Note 20 Ultra is screwed again because he gets a battery life which is even lower than the S20 Ultra. And the S20 Ultra makes battery life with the um, Exynos 990 was the worst of all flagship smartphones ever <laughs> I would say in, in comparison at least in this year so even the Sony with 4000 million per hours and the Snapdragon 865 Xperia 1 can beat the S20 Ultra without any problems 1000 million per hours just you can just throw them away on the uh, S20 Ultra and the Note 20 Ultra will be like abysmal it's like it's I don't know what Samsung was it's, it's like it it isn't so hard to just say okay we change our production line we, we buy a little bit more of the Snapdragon processors and so we can sell them around the world so we don't have to get to the we don't have to sell them with our subpar Exynos chipsets I mean the the performance of the Exynos is maybe not so bad but the battery life is like not great it's like very very bad if you have the s20 ultra it's like watch reviews from uh, reviewers in europe like if you can understand german watch the german reviewers they all criticize the battery life watch the rs uh, review oh it's the best invention since sliced bread it's because of the processor the processor is the big difference because the snapdragon 865 has like super low power consumption the Exynos, on the other hand, has a much higher power consumption. If you, comp there was like a video coming out, like I think it was a Note and S10 uh, line, uh, comparing the Exynos uh, camera performance versus, or the, the, the Snapdragon camera performance with the Exynos camera performance. Also, the Snapdragon variant was better. So why do we here in New Zealand, Europe? basically everywhere outside of the US get such worse flagship devices from Samsung. Why do we have to bear it? You don't have to bear it. Don't buy it. Simple as this. Don't let them screw you over. This is really ridiculous. You get the S20 Ultra, if you really want it, one at a time zoom is ridiculous anyway. But if you really, really want it, just uh, get the S20 Ultra. Don't even look at the Note 20 Ultra. It's a it's waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's like don't no, no 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 no. What the fuck? I even see selfie camera is different. <laughs> this is unbelievable. The selfie cam on the Note 20 Ultra is 10 megapixels. On the S20 Ultra, it's 40 megapixels. Basically, that's down calculated to 10. Yeah, uh, I'm not sure. Anyway. No, 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 no. Don't buy this crap. This is literally Samsung trying to screw us over. Even in the US, I would say you get a better processor, yes, but the battery is smaller. Some features, especially the Note 20, are missing. No. Even there, where it does make a little bit more sense because you get a better processor. Don't buy it. It's screwing us over with so many good. Uh, flagship killers coming out for a mid-range price don't even look at it no 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 Samsung I'm disappointed no no no